Hey guys, as you may know, we've been working on our Ford Super Tremor Overland Rig for the No Pavement Needed series for a very long time, and it's almost all there. I think this is the best Overland Rig because it's big and huge! What? Wrong! If you want the best overlanding rig, you need to go mid-size, just like this truck. So guys, we have a bit of a small versus huge overland truck comparison. So Nathan, what do you think we go just element by element and try to figure out which one is best for you? I've already won! You know, there's something to be said about having the right combination. This is the proper platform for overlanding. And then you add to it all of the goodies to make it absolutely unstoppable. Now let me explain what this Tacoma is. It's a 2013, it has the four liter V6, five speed automatic transmission, bulletproof. I used to have a Tacoma, trust me. <laughs> These things are badass. More so than anything that is currently being built. On top of that, all the suspension, all the goodies that this guy put on here, make it absolutely ideal for overlanding. Let me show you something. There are a lot of toys on this, which we're gonna go over in a minute. But here's something extraordinary about this vehicle versus the Behemoth. See my hand? That's pretty much the height, right there. You can't do that with that other one. The width, pretty much a little bit wider than this. My point is, when you're on a trail, you want something this size to get you through the trail. You don't need something that weighs as much as a planet. Me, 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 perfection. Yeah, it's a good size. Yeah, mid-size, small, nice Toyota. Dude, this is a commercial duty, heavy duty truck. This is an F-250, it's brand new. It's got a V8 engine, 7.3 liters, big block, push rod. It's proven technology. Yes, this engine is new, but they put a lot of development into it to make it very durable. It's got a dual battery system. It's really badass and it will go anywhere because it's got four wheel drive and a rear locker and we're already taking it to Moab. Hey, can I show the cameraman something? Come here. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 blah, 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 blah. Okay, see the big cows over there? Yeah, cows. Ford F-250. See the horse in the further distance, a little bit further up? Yeah. Fleet of foot? That's the Toyota. Are Prove me wrong. Are you calling me a cow? Nope, I'm calling the truck a cow. All right, Nathan, the Ford is big. It might be a big bull, but how about we do an articulation test and see what's what? This is also a test of approach angle because obviously when you're off-road, you want to be able to clear an obstacle and go over it and also to see how the suspension can flex. Let's try it in this ditch. Yeah, she's in the air. And this is the other reason why these campers, the four-wheel camper and the cab camper are quite expensive, is because of their tough construction. It's aluminum framing, composite, it's lightweight, and it's also tough. So it doesn't all bend out of shape when you're going off-road. One of the big differences is that he has a solid front axle, but this is a lighter truck. Obviously the wheelbase is very different. So it's not gonna be that easy just to go, hmm, this one articulates better than that one. Well, we already know that his probably articulates a little bit better, but the point is that this will do it pretty damn well. Check this out. Ha <laughs> ha nice. So obviously this short mid-sized Tacoma the wheelbase is way shorter. There's um, disadvantages and advantages to both. Of course, the long wheelbase is more comfortable on the rough road. Short wheelbase will get you to more places, but look. Yep, this truck is in the air as well, and 
The articulation is quite nice. This engine is 236 horsepower, 266 pound-feet of torque. It hasn't been altered in any way. Beyond the fact that it's a really good size and it's a reliable setup, there's room for improvement all the time, and that's including dual battery, which can cycle off, obviously, the alternator, but also solar panels, onboard air, and it does have a nifty little snorkel. We're gonna have to do a little test between these two trucks because I just happen to know they're both heavy vehicles because they both have campers attached to them and a lot of accessories. Uh, but this has way more power, even though uh, that little Tacoma is much smaller, I think this will out accelerate it any day of the week. I'm just curious how quick these trucks are on the pavement, so let's try. Check it out, 11.24. Yeah, this truck is a lot heavier, but it's also a lot more powerful. By the way, the truck originally was about 55 grand brand new, $10,000 of suspension work and uh, some additional parts. And then uh, 31,000 approximately for the camper. So that's about 65 plus 31, 96,000 for this rig right now. All right, let's see exactly how quick this Toyota Overland truck is. Okay. Still going. Here we go, 13.24, fully loaded. Now here's the thing that comes back every single time I look at this when I compare it to vehicles like our Ford F-250. Look, I'm being critical, but I'm kind of having a good time at it, right? Because I know it's an awesome truck. But this thing, as equipped with everything on it, is around $65,000. That's the truck with all the stuff on it. Now I know overlanding can be as simple as a 10 speed with a tent, but for a lot of guys who like to go off-road in a truck, this isn't such a bad option. Yep, you saw that correctly. Zero to 60 acceleration times, and we're not racing these trucks, but the Ford is very, very strong, and it sounds properly good. Interesting point here, the owner of this vehicle actually swapped out the stock rear end for a 456 for better acceleration and for better performance off-road. I think that a vehicle like this is much more logical when you're going off-road into the middle of nowhere instead of having a big thirsty 7.3 liter, especially when you want to push it off a hill. Boy, do I want to push that off the hill. When you're going overland, long distance off-road and you're bouncing around on really tough terrain, you want a heavy duty frame. This truck has got it. This truck also has a suspension lift. This is basically a three inch lift overall using a very high-end Carly suspension system with King shocks and Carly shock tuning. And this truck is running on 37 inch tall tires. And on this Tacoma, what, what is this Nathan? Do you have like little coasters for wheels? You know the funny thing is? What? In terms of off-road height, look at your steps. Look how high you are compared to me. All that bulk, and yet you can't clear anything that I can clear. These are sweet looking KO2s. The thing is, it's all about suspension. This has a two and a half inch lift. So yeah, not quite as high as the Ford, but this does have the Dobinson's suspension set up throughout and Old Man Emu adjustable shocks throughout. It's really easy to open this camper, just a little bit of pressure and there are struts that help you raise the roof. Yes, 
I made my house in about 60 seconds. Good. Plus 60 seconds, plus 60 seconds, plus... Dude, that took you five minutes. No. It took you five minutes. I had one issue with a little bolt, okay? Uh, okay. Yeah. I'll give you four minutes. All right, let's see what you can do. Willa! Everything you need and nothing you don't. There's enough room for two people, so Roman and I could spoon up there, I guess, if we had to. It has a bathroom, it's portable. It has a refrigerator with two zones, giant one too, by the way. And it has cabinetry throughout, lots of places which are all secure. So you can bang the crap out of this thing and nothing's gonna go flying out. Pockets everywhere, properly zipped, water resistant. And of course it has a hand pump shower. Now, why do you want that instead of some electrical thing? Because you might lose power and you need to have a shower. Andre needs to have a shower. Here's the biggest difference when you compare a heavy duty truck like this with a big camper on top versus a mid-size truck. I can actually sit here comfortably. I spent a weekend in this camper uh, just about a week ago and it was raining really hard and we actually had four people here playing cards. Yes, it's a little bit tight for four people, but it's doable. This bed extends into a king, which means you can sleep two people really comfortably, maybe three if you have kids, and another person across here, because this length is about 6'4". So even a guy like me can lay down comfortably. That's the difference. It's space. See? So Nathan makes a point about electricity and power in both of these campers. Yes, I do have a lot more components that are powered. One of them is a water pump. Did you hear that? This is actually one of their smaller campers. This is a Hawk model from four wheel campers. It fits perfectly into this Ford Super Duty bed. This bed length here on this truck is 6.75 feet. Uh, pretty nice. I've got a heater here, a water heater. Yes, water here. So no matter the time of year, I can always take my shower. Nathan wants me to take a shower? Well, okay, I will. I can control my temperature right here, get it warmed up, and then I can just... Oh yeah, oh yeah. Nathan, you should try this. That's some spicy stuff for TFL After Dark. <laughs> Andre needs to have a shower. Rub, 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 shower time. Hey. Okay. One second. Yep. Dude! You know what I have that you don't? What? An awesome shower. And also, I could put a porta potty in here. Privacy. Privacy! That's true, but I can get one of those on my camper too. I'm sorry, do you have one on yours? No. no that's what I thought. Fire up the CCR, bring out the table, ready to camp. Dude, what's that? That goes, and it's for rain. Because nice. it rains when people camp. Not in Colorado. <laughs> oh, no, never. Actually it can. Yeah, yeah, it really does. Or snow. Or snow. Yeah. This is fine for snow. Alrighty, Nathan has a very fancy, very expensive awning. But I have an awning too. It's very compact. This is the moon shade and it's only about eight pounds and you can attach it to anything including this camper let me show you comes in a bag very simple good done Really? Because you're going to go under that? No, no. Uh, I need legs. Can you hold this up? Oh, uh, okay. Hold this up. Okay. Down. Set it down. Huh? It's in the hole! Huh? Actually, yeah, this is pretty nice. Um... Well, okay. It's not as easy as yours. No, not but even But this close. is also more affordable than yours. Yeah, this is something you can put on anything. 
Nathan, so can we come to a common ground at this picnic table? We can come to a common ground, which is both of these things would be really, really awesome, except mine's slightly more awesomer. Oh man. Well guys, let us know what you think. Would you rather have a smaller truck to maybe fit on more trails? Or would you rather be more comfortable, have V8 power? I've already won, because most of these guys are going to stick with me. Trust me. All right, guys, and go back to tflaffroad.com and tfltruck.com and all the other TFL properties. TFL Overland. Yes! <laughs> Hi.